it has come to my attention via the interwebs and the very, very opinionated people on the Instagrams that my audio is no good. Now, I am not an audio engineer, a sound engineer, or anything like that. I am using a Rode Mic Pro above me to do my audio. So I am asking you on the interwebs, what mic or audio should I get to make my audio better? Because again, not an audio guy. Photoshop, Lightroom, I got you. Audio, you got me. Okay, into the video. Will Simpson here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to go over uh, two or three, I'm not sure yet what we're doing, methods of removing things in Photoshop from your photos. Now, our example photo is this one right here because when you're using an off-camera flash, occasionally you have to have the flash in the actual image that you're taking to get it close enough to the model, to get the proper light on them, and then remove them in post. This is very, very common, and you just don't see it because this is already removed when you see the final photo. And this is probably the best trick for this way, for this method. Take your photo, right? Take your photo, get it exactly how you want. Now this part is key. Have your focus set on the model. Before you do anything, you've taken the photo, next step, switch your camera to manual focus, make sure that the it's focused on the model, have the model and your person holding the light or the light move out of frame, do not move and take another picture. This will give you two photos, this one here and this one here. Now with this one, I didn't have the model move, I didn't need to because I, because the, the separation of the light to the model was so great that it was no problem. But this will give you two photos. If you need to fix anything, well, you have a blank canvas for you to repair stuff. And it just, it, you don't have to do it all the time, but when you're shooting models and stuff like this and something happens to get in the way or you, you like one photo, but you don't like another, you can combine them and it makes it really easy. So that's a very long winded way of saying, we're gonna remove my light holder. <laughs> Now for this example, we're gonna start in Lightroom and then we're gonna to go to Photoshop. You can start in Photoshop and do this exact same method. This is just uh, from the Lightroom option. Yeah, okay, so first thing we're gonna do is crop the image because it's crooked and I always, I don't know about you, but for me, I have a tilt. I have a tilt left. Every time I take a photo, I feel like I'm straight, but I'm always tilted left. Almost every single one of my photos has to be tilted. like. Drives me nuts. I try and fix it, I don't fix it. Okay, so we're gonna crop this. We're gonna straighten out the horizon just like that. We don't have to be perfect. And then we're gonna apply one of my presets from my Exploring Photography 2020 preset pack, which is available on my website. We're gonna apply Summer Breeze. Now we're not gonna do too many adjustments. We're literally just going to leave it as is. We're just gonna brighten it up just a shade and add some warmth. Boom, looking fabulous. Now we're going to press Copy, Command C, we're going to copy all these adjustments, go to our next photo. We're going to crop this bad boy, straighten it out just like that, and pre Ooh, there we go. And press Command V to paste the same settings. Now, one thing you will notice, the model is much darker. Why do you think that is? Very obvious, you're right. You probably said, duh, Will, you have a flash in this one and not in this one, and you would be right. Okay, good, now we're gonna select both images press shift and click. We're gonna right click on one and we're going to go to edit in. And this is important, open as layers in Photoshop. We're not editing in Photoshop because we wanna open both images in the same file. So open as layers in Photoshop. This is gonna take a minute. I'm gonna have some tea. Are you an unsweet or a sweet tea person? This says a lot about you or a no tea person. I will judge you. Now, once we are in Photoshop, you'll notice you have both images. So here on the right side, we click the eye, we have this one and this one. Now, one thing you will notice is the size has changed. This one is smaller than our background, but that's okay. Now, the first method, and this is one that, this is what everyone used to do. So we're just gonna Command T and transform this to make it the same size as the actual um, workspace that we're working on. This is how we used to do it. 
press the lasso tool, draw a general circle around this person. At least this is how I used to do it. This might have been the worst way to do it, but this is how I used to do it in the, in the beginning. So then you press the stamp tool. Let's go ahead and create another layer here. Press the stamp tool. We're gonna make sure this says current and below. We're gonna stamp here, and then we're just going to apply this just like this. Now, this is not gonna look good. I'm doing this fast because this is not how it's done anymore. When I used to do it back in the day, it looked a lot better. So, you see that looks like absolute garbage. Again, I would have done this much more carefully and much more specifically if I was still doing this method. So we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of this little layer because that is not the way we do it anymore. The next way you can do it, and this is if you have generative fill, which I actually find works really well. We're gonna press L on the keyboard and we're going to simply circle our person again. And you might ask, why are we not doing select subject? Well, if I did a select subject, it might select her as well. It also will give a very specific selection of him and I want a general with included areas around him. So this is the other way you can do it. You go to generative fill, which is magic. Press generate, no prompts, don't enter anything in it and let it do its thing. Honestly, if you're not sure how to remove something or fix something, try generative, generative fill. It has blown my mind time and time again. And this is how I did it last time. But look at this, I mean, come on, it's done. Look, it even gave you a sun flare, that's crazy. And then it gives you a couple of options. So here's option two, that looks pretty good. I just don't like this area down here. Looks a little fake. Uh, that's okay, but again, I don't like this area down here. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. And the good thing about generative fill is if you don't like that, you can simply do it again and generate over and over and over again until you get the one you, want, you like. So that's option number two, a very workable option. Option number three, and this is with our blank background, we're going to turn generative fill off. So the next thing we're gonna do is press, select our layer one. We're actually gonna name this uh, good layer later. Good layer and backup layer. Good, so we're gonna select both of these, press shift and select them both. And we're gonna go to edit and then auto align layers. We're just gonna leave it at auto and press okay. This is gonna do a pretty good job of aligning the images together. Now, the one thing we're not worried about is if the model aligns with herself. Now you'll notice that it kind of did something weird. Like she looks odd. So let me undo this real quick. Yeah, so it, 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 it weirdly altered her. So usually auto align works really well, but in this case, we're gonna, or sorry, usually auto works pretty well. So in this case, we're just gonna do perspective and see if that, because it, it made her look odd. Yeah, see, it does the same thing. Okay, most of the times, like I said, the auto will work totally fine. In this case, this the removal is fairly simple. So. All we're gonna do is we're going to click on the good layer and we're gonna lower the opacity, all right? Then we're going to Command T on the backup layer and align it manually. You see how the, you can see the horizon right here. And we're just gonna lower it till the horizon matches. And that looks good. Everything else I'm not worried about because all we're doing is removing him. So. Let's go ahead and put the opacity back up. We're gonna select our good layer, click the mask button here, press the B on the keyboard for the brush tool, make sure it's opacity 100% up here, make sure black is your foreground here. If it isn't, you can press D on the keyboard, which resets it to default, and then X will toggle the white and the black. So black foreground, white, con white reveals, black conceals. So then all we're gonna do is we're just going to paint out our subject. Now, what you might find a little bit of trouble with, especially for this image, is the water line here. So what we can do is we can do, well, no, we just take them out fully, right? And then we just simply replace the water, right? Just like that, until we get a good kind of blend point, kind of like that. Good. That's working, and okay, we can fix that. Good, there we go. 
See how it kind of fades back, so that works. And this might take a little bit of tweaking here and there, but it should work fine. This is removing the flash, because the flash kind of uh, gave some light on our sand, so that's looking okay. And then you just make it so it looks workable. And you can get as close to her feet as you want. Make sure you don't start removing her. Good, and there we go. Now you might say, oh, well you remove some of the image. That's okay, here we go, ready? Command, Shift, Command, Option E on a Mac. We're gonna press Crop and we're going to just adjust this. Now we could just simply co uh, content aware fill that little line, but why bother when we can, we don't need it, we can just crop it and it looks good. And there we go. That is a very easy way and an important reason to always have like a backup photo. So remember to summarize, take the photo with your model, set the focus to manual so your focus doesn't change when your model leaves, keep your exact same position when everybody's out of the frame, take another photo. Then you have a backup photo to do things like this. Now again, this is kind of specific to certain situations. You may not need to use it and generative fill works really, really good. But this is an incredible way to just give you some peace of mind when you take a photo. And that's the technique. So hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you wanna continue your photography, editing, or general education, YouTube recommends that video. I recommend this video uh, and that's it. But last week was Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day. And also check out the description because there's some goodies in this video that you may or may not want. I'll see you next week.